Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store, Forge Irish Stout. Delighted to be joined by Sam Jones again. Quite quickly after, obviously, last week, Jack Cattrall beating Josh Taylor in what was an epic rematch. Since um, since sort of the dust has settled now, and if you had time to sort of reflect on what was oh. just an incredible night. I'm a bit stiff. <laughs> um, do you know what? I can't believe it's been a week already. It's, cra- it's crazy how, how fast it all goes. Um, yeah, oh, it was it was an amazing night, wasn't it? Like you was there, the atmosphere was just special, wasn't it? Special, special. It's the best atmosphere I've heard um, in a British boxing ring for a long time. Listen, I might be, I don't know, it might be biased, but I've, I, you'll struggle to find a better atmosphere than the one you, I heard that on on Saturday. I think the last time I heard something even slightly similar was probably Calm Brook, just as they were walking out. And we all know that, obviously, that was how many years in the making. So um, it was obviously yeah. a good atmosphere. Yeah, it was a great atmosphere. I was there. I, I was there. Um, yeah, great atmosphere that day as well. Um, just talking about sort of where we're at now, I've seen Jack on Twitter and obviously saying, I don't know if Tia Fimo's blocked me or anything, so he might not be seeing these... Uh, messages but he's a lot of options and in terms of the UK now he's established himself as a as a headliner done it on multiple occasions um done it and you know sold out the arena against Josh Taylor Josh Ta- Josh Taylor get me words out I know you need dance partners but he's um is it a really good point in his career and I believe also a free agent yeah look I, I've made no secret right I said Jack was a headliner in my opinion before that fight but you need dance partners. I try and make this this comparison all the time. Like Devin Haney is meant to to be this the star in a spot. I don't want to disrespect Devin Haney, but I'm just using this as an example. Yeah. Like when he boxed Progre, it was a big fight. Do you understand what I mean? Like two Americans, and 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 it sold really well. But you'll see, not just because he lost, but his his fight next against Sandor Martin, like. It's not, you need dance partners in boxing to make great events and great shows. And Jack Cattrall is, is ready for massive fights. And you can see Jack Cattrall will put bums in seats. He's coasted in a lot of his fights because he's that good, Jack. And I think people were surprised when Jack had to dog it a little bit in there that he had it in him. Good chin, strong. And also a good, a puncher as well. He can punch Jack. Like, like I'm not saying he's, he's this one punch, single punch KO, but Jack's got heavy hands. Anyone that spars him will tell you he's got heavy, heavy hands. And Josh Taylor's not a slouch, right? But there was only one puncher in that ring on on, on Saturday night, and that was Jack Cattrall. Um, got the better in all the exchanges um, while we're on the subject. It was a close fight. It really was. It was a close fight. But in my opinion, you can have close fights and clear winners. And Jack Cattrall was a clear winner in that fight, as he was two years ago. 100%. And he's now put himself in a position, we mentioned there, with his sort of free agent status. I'm sure I'm sure match him, obviously, with what they've done for him so far. We'll want to continue the working relationship. They've had him headlined, had him against good fighters. Obviously, Jorge Linares done a lot for the sport. People obviously will say, yeah, but he was past his best. But you need them fights and you need them sort of get um, them bridges before you go on to, you know, elite world level and, and things like that. Um, what would you like to see? Because... Everyone will be talking about this trilogy. I'm pretty sure yes. people will be calling for that. Jack Cattrall himself, I know, will want that carrot of being a world champion. Um, where are you at with this as, obviously, the advisor, the agent? It, it, it's a hard one, really, because, but, but just to be blunt about it, the, 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 the trilogy has been spoken about because, look, Eddie... He likes money, doesn't he? Like we, I suppose we. Is he like he like he likes money. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a he's a great businessman. So Eddie knows that that's the fight that it it, it makes it makes a lot of money. Do you know what I mean? But genuinely, I mean this. Jax wants to be a world champion. Genuinely, Jack really wants to be a world champion, and ultimately, we're not ruling out the the trilogy, but. Yeah. If the trilogy was to happen, and this is me being honest about it, because not many people are honest about these situations, Jack's going to have to get paid yeah. a real bag. Do you understand what I mean? He, he, he's he's, he's going to have to get paid seriously for that fight because in Jack's mind, he's beat him twice and it's like to beat him again. Three, t- three times it's like Jack wants something fresh, wants fresh meat. 
And um, Tiafimo yeah. Lopez is always the fight that Jack's always fancied and wanted. And I genuinely believe Jack's style is a nightmare for Tiafimo Lopez um, and beats him. And I think if I would have said this the fight before, people would have been like, what are you talking about? But let's be honest, Tiafimo, when he beat Josh Taylor, Jack had already beat Josh Taylor with the greatest of respect. Mm. Um that's the fight. And I think Jack's put on Twitter today, look, even if he has to run through Arnold Barboza to force Tiafimo Lopez to fight him, then Jack's prepared to do that. But look, there's fights out there like the Progre fight. Jack cannot fight somebody that no one's like hurt with the greatest respect no one's ever heard of. Jack wants massive fights only now. He wants massive fights only. But um Barboza, if it puts him into a mandatory position for obvious reasons, yes. not saying he's a massive name, but he's number one. Um Regis Progre is there. That was a fight that was done a, a, a few years back, but it never got it never materialized. Um the Tiafimo Lopez fight, but Jack will go up to 147 and, and, and have it there as well. Honestly, he's big enough to, to, to do it. Um and like Jack's instructions to me are I want the I want the biggest fight, but ultimately I want to I want to become a world champion and, and I want to be active. Jack wants to fight twice more before the before the year's out. Um, and yeah, going back to what you said about Jack being a free agent, yeah, that is the case. Because, but it's not really a secret because Matching do, with a lot of their fighters, they do three fight deals. It's the end of the three fight deal. Um, that they want to continue working with Jack, as you would imagine. Like, like I know, again, I'm not saying he's the biggest because he's not, but Jack is one of the biggest names in British boxing now. If you if if, if, if and, and I just I think I think that's a fact really now. Yeah. Um I don't think it's a wild shout to, to say that. And uh, there isn't many headliners in British boxing. There is not many headliners in British boxing. Jack's one of them. So that's gold dust in my opinion. Um so yeah, that, that's 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 where we're at. I'm just that's me being open and honest. Um but yeah. I'm I'm speaking to Frank Smith. Uh, <laughs> I'm speaking to Frank Smith and Eddie like a, a lot. I know they're busy out there, but Jack's my priority. So I'm uh, I, I'm I'm busier than ever really at, at the moment in regards to in regards to Jack because there's a lot of things coming our way as you can imagine. Yeah, I was going to say, and but when you when you look at Jack now being the he headline, if he does fight um, Taylor um, Josh again for a trilogy, I know this has been playing on his mind, and he's now. He's done that now. So like you say, he has to command a fee that will satisfy him not fighting for a world title that will... Yeah, yeah. Matt, you're 100%. Like, a lot of people are very like, oh, it's not about it. But that fight is a, is is strictly... It'll be a financial fight. Do you understand what I mean? It'll be... Because it's a big fight. Listen, everyone will get behind it. There's genuine... People know there's genuine rivalry. It's not made up. They don't like each other. They're still probably not fond of each other, even after spending 24 rounds in the ring together. But Jack got very handsomely paid for that fight there, right? Rightfully so. Taylor got very handsomely paid. But Jack got the B side of the pie. Do you understand what I mean? He got, he got, he got the B side of the pie, which rightfully so, because of... Well, not really rightly so, because Jack won the first fight. But because of Taylor's achievements, that, that that's that's how the that's how life goes. But oh. it's not some Oliver Twist Oliver Twist situation now, where oh, can we have? You know, it's like if we if 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 they want the fight and whoever wants to do, if Matt Trim want to do the fight, you have to pay Jack. You have to pay him, okay. um, it, because Jack will be the A side in that fight. It'll be Catchel. It'll be it'll be Catchel Taylor. If if the third fight happens, but I'm not so sure it does because it's an expensive. Jack's expensive in that fight. I'm just being real. He's he's expensive in that fight. But again, Jack wants to be world champion. Jamie Moore wants Jack to be world champion, and that's what I'm trying to trying to to, to deliver for him. But another thing people have to take into consideration is this, and this is just the facts for for people. This is just the facts. The WBC belt is yeah. occupied, right? Because uh, I'm going back to that, I was annoyed really in that first. But I understood it why Matchroom did the fight for Regis and Devin Haney because the Zone USA wanted a big fight. But I believe Jack should have challenged Regis Progre for that belt, and I would have, and I believe Jack would have done the same, if not worse, what Haney did to to Progre. Um, so yeah, where where we're at at the moment is <laughs> going back to what I was saying: the WBC belt. That's being occupied. Devin Haney has to fight Sandor Martin. That's that belt out of the way. The IBF 
Matias is fighting Paro, and the winner has to fight um, yeah, Richardson. Fight Rich, what's his name? I forget. Richardson, Richardson Hitchens, right? He's got to fight Richardson Hitchens. The WBA belt, Isaac Cruz is fighting on that big card, isn't he, uh, coming up? I think he's fighting. Is he fighting? And then, Vontae Tank. Yes. Yeah, I think so. But then he's got a mandatory against Barroso, who's the interim champion, right? And then you've got the, the WBO belt. Tia Fimo's fighting Steve Clag Claggett. Steve Steve Clag Claggett. Steve Claggett in a in a horrible fight. Uh and then the winner has to fight Barboza. Yeah. So do you understand why what I'm saying with Jack? It's like if Jack has to fight a Barboza to get that position, no problems, we'll do it. But he'll also fight Regis Progo because Regis Progo is a big name. Um, yeah. And fans want to see a big name. And Jack don't want to just sit down twiddling his thumbs waiting for a big fight. But the reason why I broke that down is for when people say, oh, why is he not fighting for a world title next? If It's like he could fight for a world title next, but it's unlikely. Yeah. And, unless unless he waits until, say, December, when a belt comes up, when a belt becomes available as a man, as a, as a, not a mandatory. Jack don't want to sit around waiting for belts. He wants to be active. Because Jack spent a lot of time in his career. If people's followed Jack's career, it's been very like up, down in the sense of very inactive. And I said to Jack, we sat down together when we first started working to each other. He says, mate, I want to make you active because that's the only way people are going to see the best out of you. Because um, I truly believe Jack's one of the best fighters. He's, he's one of the best fighters in the world. I really do believe that with his talent. Um and I think people are just starting to see how how good he actually is. You've seen now. I went on a bit of a bit of a, bit of a long one there, but I just wanted to explain to people. You've saved me. Asking, you've saved me asking the questions because obviously, for people in the know, we understand the mandatory situations. And you're quite right in saying that. Look at the activity the past 12, 18 months. Look what it's done for him. He had the spell after the Taylor fight, and it's like it must be an awful position. But then Matchroom come on board, fight, 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 and it's like. He looked sharp as a tack the other night. And for him to get out again... Yeah, was, yeah. I'm sure he'll do him the world of good And again. Matt, as well, for profile as well, right? I needed to deliver Jack that Taylor fight. Otherwise, genuinely... I mean, I said it to, to many people. I've failed him. If I don't deliver him that rematch, I've failed him. Because Jack had his moment taken away from him. I'm not going to start filing in it again. But Jack had his moment taken away from him, which stopped him earning millions and millions of pounds. Mm-hmm. So in the in the meantime, he's in the Who Needs Him club. Yeah. But Taylor needed to write write the wrong for himself as well. Take, like, that's what I mean. Like Taylor's he needs respect. You know what I mean? Like he's box Jack. He, he, I know he people say oh, he didn't need to, but he kind of did. He kind of did. And he and and how good was Josh Taylor even at? That wasn't a mug, a, a version of Josh Taylor. That was a very very sharp, strong version of Josh Taylor at one forty. And I know it's hard for people to comprehend because of the achievements Josh has got and Jack not being a world champion. But Jack Catcher is just a better fighter than Josh Taylor. Mm-hmm. And that's just, in my opinion, that's just it's the bottom line. He's a better fighter than Josh Taylor mm-hmm. and um, has, his, has his number. And that's just, that's just the way it works sometimes in boxing. Sometimes fighters just have your number. Yeah, it was two two world level fighters, and there's a winner. Two the- world level fighters going at it in a very closely fought contest with a clear winner. Hundred percent. Well, look, let's um, let's see what happens with Jack. The um, the options are endless. I'd like to see him bring a Tiafimo to Manchester or something like that. That'd be great. Tiafimo, but- I don't think realistically again because get, you're giving the people false. Oh, why is Tiafimo not coming? Tiafimo is not coming to Manchester, mate. He's not coming to Manchester. Would love him someone to bring him to Manchester, but I don't think Eddie's got the hundred million that he'd probably demand to bring him over to Manchester in the meantime. Jack's prepared to travel for that fight, but program. Um, Program. Yeah, yeah, program, program, because he hasn't got a belt. Like, listen, I respect Regis. I speak, to, I speak to Regis a lot. I've got so much time for him, respect him loads. And um, that fight, I believe, would be pretty easy to make, to be honest with you. There's no belt on the line. It's just a, a great fight. It's a great big fight. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, let's uh, let, let's see what happens. But I'm I'm on the case, and uh, there is a lot happening in the in the in the world of Jack Catchell. Hundred percent. Well, look. Um, let's come on to the five v five. I've just watched the Wayans before. Um, before you'd uh, messaged about this. Um, I'm I'm really excited. There's a few fights I genuinely like. Could not tell you either way. Where I wouldn't even say, "Oh, I don't know." Same, same. Um, 
I mean, Amo Williams, Hamza Shiraz, I look at that fight and go, couldn't tell you either way. I look at the Hergovic Dubois is an interesting one. I look at that and just think, I not don't... for me, bro. Not for me. No, if you you've got a you've got that one tag. Go on, start with that one then. Go on. Hergovic big, mate. Hergovic big. Yeah. I think Daniel's gonna struggle big, big time in that fight. I think that, that it's not a secret. Look, Daniel struggles with confidence, right? Um and Fig- Philip Hergovic is a beast. Like like he's so mentally strong, Philip Hergovic. Um I think he'll stop Daniel six, six between six and eight. What what do you make of um Wilder Zhang? Wilder's saying all the right things this time. Um Yeah, he looks like I, I just did a tweet you a minute ago, Matt, right? Um which Ariel Hawani uh, um really uh, gave his approval on because if you're a wrestling fan, sorry for the people that don't like wrestling, but I'm going to give you a, a, an, an analogy. Vince McMahon said to Stone Cold Steve Austin in a bar about 25 years ago, he looked at Austin when Austin didn't have his mojo and he tapped him and says, I need the old Stone Cold. I need the old Stone Cold to Eli- come and hit the Alliance. I need the old Stone Cold and screamed at him. Need it. I need it bad, yeah? And do you remember when Stone Cold walked down the ring like this to the ring with a pool cue snapped in half and he beat the... And, and, he, and, he, and he went straight through the alliance. Sorry to get... Sorry, I know all the non-wrestling fans will hate this shit, but it's, a, it's, it's the best analogy I can give you. That is what Eddie Hearn was doing to Deontay Wilder. I need the bronze bomber. I need the nasty Deontay Wilder. I need the the guy that's going to knock you unconscious, Deontay Wilder. Because Eddie knows if Wilder gets chinned in this fight, which could happen, by the way, he is fucked. Proper. Because that's all the points. Straight down the drain. Eddie could win most of them. They could win most of them fights tomorrow, but it would all be fucked because of Zhang chinning Wilder. That fight, in my opinion, is going three rounds. Wilder can win by a knockout or Zhang's winning by a knockout. But I don't believe that fight sees round four. Yeah, I think I concur. Sorry to give you a long, sorry to give you a long-winded prediction on that. I'm going for Wilder, I'm backing Wilder, because I think he's gonna resemble what Austin did to the Alliance. <laughs> but Zhang could come back. Uh, Zhang could could clip Wilder. He could, but Let's see, but I'd like to see the old Deontay Wilder tomorrow. I, I would him. like to see him. I would love to see him whoop Gilles Jean tomorrow. Um, Nick Paul, Ray Ford. I'm in my own head. I can't predict that fight, Matt. I'm... Can't predict. That's the one. That's the one fight I will not give you a prediction on because I don't know the outcome of it. I want Nick Ball to win because um, I, I, I really like Nick Ball. I love Paul Stevenson as well. Brilliant coach. Brilliant coach. Um, but I can't give you a winner in that one. I'm afraid. No, no, I think that's what makes it a good fight, the fact that it is like that. Um, Craig Richards, Willie Hutchinson. So spicy. Willie Hutchinson. I, 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 fancy, I, I fancy Willie. No. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, um, I'm going for the Hutch train in that fight. I think, I think um, listen, I've got a lot of time for Craig, um, but... I believe this is going to be Willie Hutchinson's moment to show actually how good he is. I remember watching Willie Hutchinson spar in David A's gym when he was 17 years old. Absolutely light the gym up. Yeah. Really light the gym up. And he's never really put it into practice. And when he did, he got beat by Lennox Clark. But I always thought to myself that that just wasn't him really. Like, I know there's excuses. I don't need to make excuses. I don't manage Willie Hutchinson. I don't have any financial involvement i'm just telling you from what i've seen of willie hutchinson doing the gym if he replicates that his best work that he does in the gym on fight night i believe he'll beat craig richards but i wish both men good luck because they're both two very they're two listen i've known willie hutchinson for for years but craig richardson's a gentleman and i wish and i wish him all the best 100 percent, yeah two good guys um i think that about Wraps it up, my mate. Thank you for joining us anyway um, at this time on a, on a Friday evening. So, um, look, we will catch up maybe next week to get a review of the um, 5v5. 
Um, if you've got a spare Matt, battery. your hair is out of control. I'm literally yeah. looking at it now, and it's uh, dark I'm, where you are, but your getting, hair is out of control. I'm, I'm getting a, a trim tomorrow. I'm going. You need, to, you, you, you need you need to Matt play that shit. No, it's it is. It's going to be back in. Uh, it's going to be back looking good tomorrow. About ten o'clock, I'm getting a cut. So, uh, are, are you are you having a haircut for for to watch the fight in the living room? Yeah, is it, you mean business tomorrow? I'm going out. I'm, just, I'm getting it for that. It's just it's well overdue. Like you know. Fair play, fair right. play. Um, but yeah, um, have you got yeah. anything you want to add? No, uh, nothing, nothing to really add. Um, just uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the coming months, Matt. I've got a lot of, lot of, lot of um, exciting nights coming. Young talent. I've got such a good young stable of fighters. I'm so excited by. I've got some signings to to announce soon. I've got some fights to announce soon. Oh, it's all kicking off. It's all kicking off. Happy days. That's what we like to hear. Um, Sam Jones, appreciate your time. We will catch up soon. Thank you, Matt. Have a good evening, Matt. Take care, mate.